Come on, call those people. Gretchen, you're going to do ladder work? If stormwater is the first and highest priority of the Puget Sound Partnership's three regional priorities to restore Puget Sound within the next decade or two, then let's focus on stormwater. Here's the bad boy. Some dark oil there. Some, somebody needs to really take their car and have it fixed. If you ever see a leak under your car, and you should check a couple times a year, you should get it fixed right away because there it sits. It's piling up there, but when the rain comes, it washes off with the rain. Water and oil resist, and the oil comes up to the surface and washes away. There it is. It's right underneath that car. You can spot it now. Of course, there's a couple other things in this image. You can see the exhaust, the tailpipe there. When that exhaust comes out, it's actually a little particulate matter that floats up in the atmosphere and water molecules attach to it, and then it comes back down as acid rain, either on the forest or on the farms or in your backyard or in Puget Sound. And one more thing, inside that wheel there, there's a brake pad that squishes on to your rotor that helps you brake. It looks like this. You can see the little red brake pads in there. In fact, I have a couple of examples right here. You can see right here that the brake pad I'm, I'm holding is pretty heavy. It's made out of metal, and it squishes onto your, your drum. And that's what creates a lot of friction and slows your car down. There's so much friction, it creates a lot of heat. So we have little copper flakes in here, which is a good thing, because copper is very good at dissipating heat. As you're holding it, I just want you to turn like this and see those copper flakes. Well, those copper flakes grind off a little bit over a period of time, and then you need to replace your brake pads. That copper dust sits there on the street. No one's the wiser. Doesn't seem like a big problem. You can't even see it until the fall when the rains return and it lifts up the copper dust and it lifts up oil and any other stuff, extra fertilizer, dog poo. It concentrates it, rushes it down through the pipes. Turns out that's exactly when salmon are returning back up the rivers, when the rain's washing the big the toxic stew back down the system. And salmon are extremely sensitive. Tiny bits of copper, big deal. Salmon can detect one part per millions of copper in the system. Very sensitive to it. Screws up their ability to navigate, avoid predators, so they're less successful in making back to the spawning habitat. This is a success story. Our state government is the first state in the nation to ban copper in brake pads. And all the car manufacturers are going to go along with it. It'll take a couple of years to get a different material that's still safe for your car, but we're shifting. No, bad girl. Stop that. Put that sponge. No. I said, Daddy said no. What's wrong with this picture? The soap is getting the grime off the car. So you now got the soap doing its job, collecting the grime, and it's all going down the storm drain because she's doing it in the driveway, and she's going to get out the hose. She loves that part to see the suds going down and away somewhere. Bad girl, sit. Take you, brown bear. Brown bear is going to eat you up. Bad girl. Brown bear, come on. Take that girl. <laughs> if you go to Brown Bear Car Wash, a commercial car wash, that is the best deal. Or any car wash that has the capacity to collect those toxins and handle them correctly for what they are, hazardous waste. Down in the trough below, it's collecting this. This is actually from Brown Bear Car Wash. I got some right here. It's very toxic, concentrated. We don't want this for salmon or to go up the food chain into orcas. We don't want this for ourselves. This is the little girl's daddy who's a good American man, likes to have a green lawn and likes to put extra fertilizer on there, make it very green, and, and maybe some uh, uh, weed and feed, get, kill, kill all those weeds with some chemicals. Unfortunately, he doesn't know this, but he's killing all the good bugs too. And the too much excess fertilizer gets into our streams and causes algae blooms, which then rot and takes the oxygen out of the water and salmon can't breathe. All kinds of unintended consequences. Just because you want a super green lawn, there is an alternative. It's called Cedar Grove compost. You buy some of this. You guys helped make it in your cafeteria each day by composting your food scraps. It goes to Cedar Grove compost, turns into this. You shovel it around your yard, you rake it in, and you have a much greener yard. Healthier bugs, healthier soil, a greener yard. Oh, this is a big dog in my neighborhood. Made a poo-poo. I bent way over to take a picture. It was a little bit ripe at this moment. Actually, I have some of this too to show you. I brought a sample. 
But I did bring the sample in a recyclable bin, so I thought that was pretty sustainable. I just wanted to show you this one piece. It's a little bit moist still. Here. Ooh, I forgot to bring my sample. I'm so sorry. I really wanted to have you feel the experience so you knew. Why is it a problem? Because there's 125,000 dogs in Seattle. That's just Seattle. What, what about Bellevue and Renton and Redmond and Issaquah and your city? We could double that number easily. Now there's 250,000 dogs. That's 15,000 pounds of poo per day doubled. That's 30,000 pounds of poo per day. And in one gram of poo the size of a pea, there's about 23 million fecal coliform bacteria. We've got to scoop the poop. Now you know why. Start a campaign. It all goes down there, down the storm drain. Yeah. Oh, bummer. There's plastic right there. It's all crushed. I don't want to pick it up. That plastic will never biodegrade. It will solar degrade. The sun eventually will break it down, but only into its smallest, most complex chemical chain, which looks a lot like zooplankton or phytoplankton floating there in the water column forever, tiny bits of beautiful plastic that looks like food. So it goes up the food chain. You could start a campaign to find out where it is and start writing to these companies saying, we're not really wanting to buy your product anymore. Can you tell us if you have a, a goal to make a change? Because this plastic is damaging Puget Sound. You need to be professional and scientifically accurate. Here's Crest toothpaste. It's the mint kind. And there is mint in there. It's real mint flavoring. But you can't see it. So in order to convince you in a TV commercial that it is mint, little tiny green flecks of plastic Looks like mint, but it's not. It gets washed right down your sink, and it goes into the ecosystem. It floats there forever. This is a whale that washed up in West Seattle recently. University of Washington researchers came and did a complete autopsy. 20 plastic bags, towels, surgical gloves, sweatpants, plastic pieces, duct tape, and that's just the little stuff. It goes down there, the storm sewer. Little bits of plastic in the food chain gut. Here's the other kind of sewer, the sewage sewer. That's where your pee and your poo go. And in Seattle, the two systems are combined. The smaller stormwater pipes throughout your neighborhood connecting to the larger wastewater treatment pipes, the sewage pipes. And in Seattle, it seemed like a good idea back in the day to put those two systems together. The problem is when it rains a lot and then rains a little bit more and all that stormwater is being, being connected to the sewage treatment, the sewage treatment plants can't handle it. And so a couple times a year, it backs up the system, which means raw sewage now is backing up through the pipes and coming out in certain places called combined sewer overflow. Both sewer systems overflowing. Here's where it's happening. This is downtown Seattle, all these locations. The city of Seattle and King County are working really hard and fast to fix this problem. But if everyone who owned homes in all those neighborhoods also helped do their part, to not have as much stormwater go straight into the system, then there'd be less pressure on the system. Where do we start? What can we do? What are some solutions we can generate? We need to work it. These are your projects. 